is learned pretty early on. We start with the whole, we cut the apple. What do we have now? We have a half. But to truly make math immersive, you have to take yourself out of the literal box. Today, I have a launch for you. This is the Beauty of Plays Fraction Year 3. Don't worry, I'm gonna rehash what happened in year one and two, so stick around. Foggy mornings are where I begin. Conversations I can never win, but it's not a competition. Though if it was, I'm losing. Welcome back, friends. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company. As I said before, we have the Beauty of Plays Fractions Year 3. First off, let me thank Della. I, you know, I cannot say that. Thank Della. Like, how many times does it take me to say Thank Della. Thank you for sponsoring today's video. Um, it's always a pleasure working with her. She creates beautiful and well-intentioned and just a holistic view with mathematics and her other resources. I highly recommend that you check out her, not only her Instagram page, she also has some YouTube videos here that will help you along the way with um, a lot of her offerings and ideas. I mean, she's a wealth of information and also her blog. It's just so rich and there's so much there to, um, to help you along your journey. Um, so I'm going to explain everything of what this is. You're probably thinking, okay, is this a new math program? Is this something that is a supplement? Is it a standalone? What are we talking about? Why is fraction in its isolation? I got you. Let's do this. All right. I do have um, a couple of housekeepings. I have, I have a discount code for you. Um, if you watch this and you decide that this is for you, this is not um, an affiliate code. Um, it's just she was gracious enough to extend that to my followers. And that is going to be FY3 Arlene. So A-R-L-E-N-E. -E. I'll flash that um, on the screen now and also in the description box below. That is going to give you 20% off this course and that expires on April 10th of 2024. Year three, we're looking at this as a Waldorf inspired um, vibe. So, if you are not familiar with Waldorf inspired mathematics, um, you're in for a treat. All right, it's truly an immersive experience that it's not just okay, we're going to deal with manipulatives and we're going to add all these hands on. Um, activities to cement a concept. Well, yes, you're going to have that too, but it goes beyond that. You are involving all the senses and sparking all kinds of different parts of your you brain. You can have um, certain supplies um, with you. You're not gonna have your traditional worksheet where your child is going to have a list of 20 problems that they are going to go through and practice in that format. Like throw that out the window, that is not what you're gonna find here. Will you find uh, examples in how to curate these lessons and reinforce it? Absolutely. But it's not gonna be in your traditional sense of what you're looking for or if you're looking for a mathematics workbook. That's not what you're going to see. There is some supplies that she is going to suggest for you, even mathematics narrations. Yes, I said that right. Um, so one of the things that we would use, now obviously this is my kiddos are much older at this point. We do this for fun because actually my daughter off to the side right now is having fun with some of the activities that I laid out to film this. Now um, I'll tell you how this breaks down in years um, because obviously you can pick this up in any year that is appropriate for you. And there is gonna be a total of four years. So year one, two, three, and four. Now in Waldorf mathematics, there is a, um there is a direction where they're learning the all four concepts at the same time from the point that they start their, you know, formal math lessons. So they're learning multiplication, they're learning addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division all woven in together. I know that for me, that was a very hard concept for me to get past, and which is why I always supplemented with a traditional uh, math curricula. If I could go back, I would probably would have stuck with a Waldorf Inspire approach with math as well. I will be doing a live in the near future with Della, so make sure you stick around and hang out on my Instagram page and tune in to that and we'll announce where we're gonna go live and just talk about um, Waldorf Inspire math as a whole. So that's gonna be wonderful. Now, this is a main lesson book. This uh, one, A Child's Dream, um, a, um, a few other places. And this one is from Oak Metal. That's why you see the like the spiral binding as probably like the only person, um, the only place that I've seen do the spiral bound on the main lesson book. I also have a school nest notebook. I just wanna go over a couple of the supplies that you know, you're know you gonna have with you because you are going to be infusing those other elements of those, you know, whether your child is an artist or not, you know, it does not matter. 
they can be able to draw stick figures is totally fine everybody can color in their own sense um, but you're going to be using some artistic uh, flares throughout these courses okay you do not need to have all the fancy um, crayons and beeswax but if you want to invest on things like that I would be happy to tell you some of the stuff that we've used um, over the years and these are what are they like seven years old Bella these crayons probably and I mean of course we have to clean them up and shave them um, this is only a new set because we gifted our older ones which were perfect um, to a little friend of ours um, and we got a new set but these last forever so we're gonna talk about those um, type of supplies that would be helpful for you pay attention to the uh, time um, stamps below if you're interested in one specific spot let's first go over um, fractions year three table of contents so now you are going to review what you did in year two as you start off in your lesson block if you prescribe to that but if not let's say you do a traditional math but your kiddo is having difficulties um, grasping fractions or you foresee that they're going to need a different approach to um, hone in those skills and to practice those skills or maybe they have been struggling. This could be something that would be great for your child to reinforce those skills and teach it in a different way than it is being exposed to now. So whether you're doing this in that main lesson block where you're doing fractions or in older grades like geometry block or whatever not, um, or you can supplement. So this would be like as a standalone if you're doing in blocks, and then, you know, always like building onto it year after year and going deeper and mastering factions, which is where you're going to be in year three. Um, and then going from there, or you can add it to your traditional math program. So here you're going to have the introduction. There is this is going to be a digital file. It's about just under 100 pages. In those 100 pages, you are going to be filled with education for you as the educator and your, you know, guiding your learner and also giving you like hand holding every step of the way. What to look for, how to make different opportunities uh, from moments that you observe and how to bring fractions to life. All right, so you're gonna have some supplies, resources. Um, you're gonna have certain sections that we're gonna go over. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna skip over this just for now. We're gonna go over that in just a bit. Um, you're gonna have the rhythm and math. You're gonna have a suggestion. Maybe you're thinking, oh, this is gonna be too open ended for me. There is some suggestion of scheduling if you're someone that needs more direction in that um, aspect. But the rhythm of it is really just like go with whatever works for you and how often you need to do it and how often you need to reinforce it. Or if you're trying to span this over um, a certain many of months, or maybe you're just doing it for a few weeks and moving on to the next task. Maybe you're doing a multiplication block that she also offers, which my kiddos love it. There was a time where they like drew the flowers. I don't even have those anymore, right? Um, they drew the flowers and that was a great way to practice mathematics, but it goes beyond that. It's not just your simple like, you know, here is the half and here's so these There tools. is uh, math journals, narration, color coding. You're gonna have um, mental math, which usually if you follow a Waldorf rhythm, you um, kind of start your morning there, um, obviously with the circle time, and then you can move into like your head, heart, hands, as I was described in um, building a main lesson block video, is that you can start also with mental math. So this is that opportunity where you can weave it into different parts of your day as well. So mental math, you can have games, um, you have the fraction war, there's different examples, then there's math manipulatives that she um, suggests for you. There is some other um, um, resources that you can add with um, books. I do not have that book anymore. I actually gifted it to a friend because um, like I said, we were a little bit beyond that. Um, but there is book suggestions as here as well. There is reasoning and relationship ha um, having halves. Then you go into all this is going to be your introduction of you know, teaching you, the educator, how to go about each and every section. I highly suggest do not skip straight to the first lesson. You want to take the time to absorb this part of the uh, of the resource before you jump into the first lesson. So here you will start with year three. You're going to start with a review, which is typical. We expect that. Um, then you have a musical fraction series, a series of halves. And let's go on to here. As you can see, there is a lot, right? So you have different series of 
different activities and different opportunities that you're going to do, um, which is going to have to be like almost like labs. And, you know, and within her science background as well, I can see how that has been translated into her math program. Exploring the rules of disability. Then um, you break it down by each one, reducing fractions. That was always tricky for me. And I wish I had something like this that helps me, you know, cement it a little bit better because I still struggle uh, with, with um, without, you know, modern technology. So reducing fractions game, uh, making tea. So this is one that I have tagged here um, to kind of give you an example of that. Obviously, I can't show you everything because it's proprietary. Um, then uh, fractions comparison, fractions war again, the equivalent fractions game. Um, so you're going to have a lot of built in, not only like games, but a series of different activities that it's not just going to be the same thing over and over again. Um, so you again, you have the multiplication algorithm and how that ties in. Um, you have some templates at the back as well um, for you. And I, uh, this is not all of them, of course. I just took some out just to show you. And you are shown also if, and we used to have this and we don't anymore, but we had like the little blocks, you know, but obviously on this size and we colored it in and made our own multiplication chart. And I pretty much believe it was when we did the multiplication um, block with Della's resource. And we went ahead and it, the process of just even like um, painting them and like arranging them and putting them in the box and, and how we, um, we sorted them and made it like help also cement those uh, math facts as well. So you have a few of these charts here and there or is information to um, given to you, uh, you know, the uh, reasoning about providing this information for your child and having that readily available and, you know, just different information on that. So this is, again, this is like a, a, a printable one, but you could also built it. And she shows that on her page. So there's a few um, different templates in the back of this file um, that you can implement and it gives you um, a little bit of assistance. So um, for example, the reciprocal relationship. So you can start here with the chart and you can print this for as many kiddos as you mm -hmm. have. Also pictures um, throughout or some examples of drawings as you're seeing the, um, the writing. So you can understand what she's saying for those visual learners, which I'm definitely- Continue on with multiplying fractions with mixed numbers, multiplying fractions as improper fractions, playing with reciprocals, dividing fractions with number lines. I want to give you this information so you know what is covered and what you're going to be able to practice within this resource so you can understand where you can place this or if this is something that you need in this present time or if you need year two or year one. Now obviously they built onto each other but maybe you're coming into this a little bit later so you can look at the table of contents on would fit where to jump in um, for you or what feels right. Um, review and comparing fractions with um, composition and fractions and then well as I said before the appendix which is some of the sheets that I showed you is going to have circles multiplication table journey entry examples because there is math narrations that is suggested for you you do not have to do everything that is listed that is number one you do not have to do everything that is listed these are this is a guide to help you um explore this in an out of the box way and have your child um truly not only memorize not memorize but understand fractions so again, we're not memorizing, we are un actually deeply understanding it, which makes such a huge difference because I was taught to memorize. All right, so rod comparison, cookie recipe diets, which we greatly appreciate. She includes those um, things as well, like grain-free cookie recipe, uh, rainbow robots, tea blend, reducing fraction games, trucha tiles, which I showed you um, in a hundred chart as well. All right, so in like I said before, we're not going to spend too much time and obviously in all the introductions. One of the resources that she does recommend is the Osborne Elementary Math Dictionary. Um, and there is also a couple of other things that she mentions as well that you will um, get to know. So um, here is, as I started the video, the meaning of half. That is the first thing that one of the fraction um, concepts that you're from kid early on. So in the first year, 
this having is to explore through circles, then through a number of lines, and last through rods. The explorations play and help give a child a sense of fractions as the quality of numbers. So you, she also has quality of numbers. That's something you typically do, I believe, in first grade. And we did that as well with a couple of resources. Giving the um, number sense and building onto these concepts. So you can, if you're watching this, and you can get an idea of how her other programs are built on because it's the same type of guide format. But the and you can see where your child falls in. So let this serve as an example to her other resources as well. But if you want to see um, like the multiplication and division things, um, I do have that video from before. So here um, in year three, you're mastering the fractions and you're going in deeper. There is some um, suggested supplies, but also you can use what you have, okay? Um, she does suggest um, Walder shops like A Child's Dream and Bella and Luna Toys. A Child's Dream has always been one of my favorites. I did order a couple times for Bella and Luna Toys, but mainly I was a Child's Dream um, person and I still do. And I, like I said, I order some stuff from um, Oak Meadow Supply as well. So you have the rods, the color paper, um, 100 block multiplication table, block crayons, um, color pencils and stamp pads. So like, Super simple sidewalk chalk if you want to bring this outside. So here is, you know, to answer like what grade would you need this? So year one, you may start it at grade three or four, depending where your child is. And then you can go from there, right? So you may start it with a middle of the road elementary child and then build down from there. Or maybe your middle school child is still having issues with this. So um, you would start wherever they would fall into, right? So one of the things that um, she um put together is that I already know disadvantage and this I'm pretty sure this part is on all her math resources because I remember reading this um in everything that um I've reviewed of hers and the I already know disadvantage like I gave an example um some time past with my husband he is a math genius so the fact that it comes very easily to him this is a common issue because um not only math geniuses but when we already know something oftentimes Times it could be difficult for us to be able to express it to our um, kiddos in a way that they understand. It's hard for us to break something down when we already know it. So she talks about that disadvantage when you already know it and you're trying to break down this concepts and how difficult that can be and ways that you can overcome these um, by taking certain steps, right? So that is something that is discussed in depth. Then the math so journey. The progressions of the fractions. So in year one, you're introducing fractions by halving, exploring relationships, equivalent fractions, sorting and comparing, simple processes of addition and subtracting, emulsification and division, and are introduced. So showing fractions in everyday use, such as music, money, Money and time. That's year one. Year two, deeper explorations of fraction sense by comparing, sorting, and finding equivalents, adding the subtract, um, subtracting like um, denominators mastered, working with fractions unlike denominators in, is introduced. So that's se um, second year. Third year, this is where we're at right now. Mastery of addition and subtracting with fractions with um, unlike denominators. Mastery of equivalent fractions with activities, games, and comparisons. Algorithm for the multiplication and division of fractions is introduced. Year four, algorithm for multiplying and dividing fractions is mastered. So that is your final year. So if whether you do it um, in blocks or maybe you build these things out during the year, that's, you know, it, it was intended in, in, in a way that it's flexible for however you need to use it, okay? So if you do math blocks, math blocks, great but if you want to just do this like you know one per year and just scaffold it or you want to just Concepts. supplement all at the same time so it's not like oh um in third second grade you start multiplication in this grade no so with Walder math you're learning all those four concepts together and then building onto it every single year. Uh, again, that's an oversimplification. So there's a growth mindset that she talks about. Um, and again, like I'm not gonna show you every single um, per, um, part, but I am wanna discuss the notice and wonders. she guides you through that and how you can build from that, but obviously not making it a chore. Um, then you talk about the math journals. So 
the, she referenced that the biggest reasons um, for this is to help see the relationship. So encourage them to keep a journal of the math activities and leave a few pages so that you can keep a table of contents to flag major, um, major concepts. And then she goes into detail about that. So when you point things out, you can just go ahead and flip it. So in Waldorf Inspire curricula and stuff, you're basically, um, when you're taking a main lesson book or a notebook, you are building your own textbook. So when you see it, at the end of the year and I um, a lot of our completed ones are in storage now because we keep for in state of Florida we have to keep records for a couple of years um, anyway so you can reference this back and it becomes their own DIY textbook that they built themselves right from beginning concepts so if you leave a blank page um, towards the beginning and I'm not saying that this is appropriate size um, you know whatever works for you um, but you can make a table of contents and refer back to that if you your child has forgotten what that meant or they have to look at it and look at that reference back and um, be able to explore it. And you could also do this in you know a simple um, school nest mathematics notebook. Now she has them in different size. This is the half inch graph, uh, which is typically better for younger kiddos. Um, and this is like one, I don't even know, like this is one of his blank ones and I'm not sure what in the world he did to it. Like it looks like a dog got a hold of it and we don't have a dog not sure what happened here but anyways this is the side of these grids so for your younger kiddos the bigger the grid size is better um and then smaller grids for obviously for your older um kiddos so that is something that you can have there and built on from there or you can just use the main lesson book whatever feels right for you all right, so there is some examples that she gives you, you know, have a le main lesson page where they narrate mathematical process on the page. Um, and you would see the, um, a lot of examples, and this is why I pulled it out. Like you can create um, a border um, on the page. And obviously I didn't need to do all that, but you can create um, a border and just make it nice and visually um, interesting. And then just the act of do, doing this and creating these pages in your main lesson book helps, you know, those sparks in the brain and um, it turns into more of a permanent memory um, um, trigger versus just something that's transient. Um, so again, you can have a blank, uh, you can have a grid page like this, or you can do this in a traditional main lesson book. Um, usually the bigger ones are good. Um, this is, I believe, 11 by 14 are for good for younger kiddos. I still prefer this size uh, with our main lesson books because, um, especially my oldest, she's an artist, and I like to give her uh, more open space um, to create her illustrations especially with science there goes science. my voice. so anyways um you don't have to have these um specific stock bark um black crayons or the um beeswax crayons or anything like that you can do color pencils you can do regular pencils whatever feels right for you but you're going to have those suggestions here then narration narration for um, math yes it seems odd but you will have your child do some narrations they don't have to but narrations for mathematical con concepts help cement a concept into their mind so they encourage encourage you to periodically have them keep a math journal and they'll be you know these will be short both in length and process that then usual language arts or history narration the process of putting mathematical concepts into formal language takes some time and mental effort that mental effort of explaining what they're doing for math in their minds into the words on paper is helpful for cementing those pathways. So like I said before, just the same type of translation as when you're drawing something out like um, in science and you're diagramming everything and you're taking the time to color in and shade and stuff like that, that really does help with those, um, those pathways. So the same thing as converting math into um, language, put that into normal language, um, a typical language that, uh, helps make those connections. So that is something that is awesome Coding. and talks about that, the language of math. You're gonna have a lot of tools. Again, this is still introduction, tools for learning, um, space practice, breaking up the mat material through time. She was gonna talk about that. The retrieval practice, memory recall, elaboration. How can this be used further? And um, interleaving, how does this relate to what I already know and concrete examples? Again, this to me always has felt like she's providing you pro with professional development and then giving you the tools to teach your child. Um, so that is always why I have 
greatly appreciate and always happy to um, collaborate with her in a review because, um, and I do take my time, like even though, like I guess, um, like I said, my kiddos are past this stage, um, it doesn't hurt for them to um, rehash it. And like I said, my daughter's still off to the side while I'm recording and she's like building some stuff here uh, with the manipulatives that I had put uh, aside. But it doesn't hurt to rehash it. It doesn't hurt to um, put these things into practice. And there's really no such thing as taking away manipulatives for your kid because they're in high school. Um, there is so many, uh, there's certain programs that still actually include it in their packages in high school and stuff because there is just so much knowledge that we have of how that helps and relates and um, helps, you know, involve all the senses. Um, so again, there's no such thing of like having to pull something away because they're too old for that, right? So these are like the, the information that helps you build you into a stronger educator in math, even if math is not your thing. And math is not my thing. I'll say that right now. I'll say that again. Bella, is math my thing? She just shook her head no. She really is there. I am not talking to myself, I promise. She really is there. There you go. <laughs> All right, so we talk about the rhythm for math. So the day-to-day -day of the math, um, you know, how to go about like, you know, structuring so it. Here she does explain one of those things that one by Right Star has a game series um, with cards and stuff like that. And that is part of, I just gifted it maybe like three weeks ago, all our cards. Um, yeah, I literally just gifted it. But that is something that you can purchase separately, right? Um, you don't have to, but that's just an idea. Okay, yeah, fraction wars, you have, again, some information of the math manipulatives that um, she um, rehashes with even um, a high schooler. Again, I have a rising ninth grader, and there is just so much um, uh, opportunity there to bring out those things, even if you're using a, a traditional math and using this as a reinforcement for a concept that you still have a nice gap in. So circles, um, and then she's going to give you examples of that thing, um, of how that is going to play in and how to set this up. She also has a blog that she's going to reference in, um, to you. She's going to give you examples of journal entries as well. So you can see what, um, what you're looking for. So if you see somebody else, then you kind of have an idea what you're expecting. Um, and then she has a lot of helpful videos, like I said, on her YouTube channel. Um, so again, we're talking about using number lines, using multiplication table. Um, and here you're going to have the information about scheduling. And again, this is just like uh, um, free flowing as well. But she suggests, you know, maybe um, the introduction is meant to be light, possibly in third or fourth grade. The, the, for the following year, she suggests a few activities in a row, double back to one or two previously done, then move forward one or two and choose a previously done and then move forward. So kind of like just in review, reintroduce, review, reintroduce and um you know and moving forward so keep in mind that some activity needs several days to practice before skipping back to previous activities so the way that you are you're going back and forth like kind of it's like spiraling through it like your spiral program so um not strictly you just mastery and you kind of just do something for a long time and um you don't revisit uh, a previous co concept with spiral you revisit that um and you let it sit, especially in walls, or you introduce a concept, you let it sit or marinate overnight. Um, then you rehash it the next morning, they do the practice. And then on the third day, um, they like review and, and, and like put everything together, like in their main lesson book and such, you know, like with other subjects. And then they um, go ahead and introduce a new concept. Um, I'm not saying that this is exactly how this is, is but that's, you know, the, um, the genetic makeup of a lot of Waldorf Inspire resources. So reasoning and relationships, she talks about um, how this ties in and then um, points you to some of her other resources that will help with that if you feel like your child needs um, a little help in that area. All right, so that is um, for the introduction and then now you start in your year three. Yes, we've arrived to year three. And um, again, you're gonna start with a review. And it's going to point out what um, you're going to be reviewing and um, then what are we going to be mastering. So um, here is, for example, so musical fraction series. I want to just walk you through one of these activities just so you can get an idea of we're, we're out of the box. We're no longer in the box, all right? We're in a sphere. <laughs> all right, so here we go. 
Um, so here, to jump into year three, she has a musical play, right? So in this activity, she'll use six to eight glasses, crystalware filled with varying fractions of water. Then you will use a spoon to play and hear the difference of the different fractions. I mean, if that is not the most perfect way to start a block of math or start a supplement of math, how are you using this? I don't know what is because that to me is involving everything. Like I'm already in love with you and I don't even not like math, all right? So um, the difference in the different fractions, so with the different levels of water, it's gonna sound differently. So you, again, you're involving all the senses. So like other series work with fractions, we will explore several different series of fractions, a series of halves, a series of increasing denominators, a series of increasing six or eighth. So you begin this activity with different glasses, um, as you can see here, and um, all at the same shape and size. So you do really need to have all the same shape and size, you know, and if you don't, just borrow from a neighbor. <laughs> um, a series of half set the, um, you set the cups in a row in a table in front of you. Then you have the steps by steps, right? She's going to walk you through exactly how you're going to set it up. You're not going to be assuming anything. It's not going to just say, oh, do it at various degrees. She's going to tell you step by step, like you're two years old and you need the, all the hand holding you can get, which is a great thing for a lot of people. And if you don't need that much hand holding, go ahead, go, go forward. Okay, um, measure the amount of water to see what that that what a hole will look like in your series. So you're showing that series and being consistent. Um, place the water back in the last glass. Label um, again, and it's just going to give you all the steps. I'm not going to read everything for you. And um, you are going to be doing this demonstration. And if your kiddos, you're doing this with an older child, you can really have them um, part of like you know setting it up too. Like if that's your, your jam, um, and then you have a next series that you're going to be working on all right so here you're gonna have you're gonna repeat the process for fourth fifth sixth um, glasses seventh and eighth if you're using them label all the glasses accordingly then do notice and wonder which we talked about before and see what your child notices about the series so you're not asking them to compute a whole bunch of things straight off the bat you're asking them to notice and wonder right take the time to gently tap the sp um, spoon on the side of each glass and listen to the sound how do they sound so you really um are deconstructing mathematics for them right you're really like just an open face sandwich okay um, and then you have another series so the way that you're doing and you can go back to and do these series again and kind of manipulate the numbers a little bit and see how it relates when you change you know one thing what are you building <laughs> if I can show you what she's doing off to the side all right so increasing the nominators the series of nearly full um anyway somebody gave her a geo board um that somebody was me and um, you have accomplished nothing else this morning. Sometimes I just need to let her notice and wonder, there we go, and that's exactly what she's doing. All right, so now um, you've started off with a few series um, um, exercises here. Now here is a recipe. So you're involving a different activity, right? And you are incorporating a different form. So again, like we think fractions and all of a sudden everybody's, oh, is it going to be filled with recipe and stuff? Not just that friends. And I know some people are just like, I'm not cook friendly. I don't cook or whatever. That's not, you know, I don't know about that life. Um, at all but i know some people don't so it, it's great that it doesn't assume like you're just going to do some kitchen science and like you know some kitchen fractions and that's it um you're going to have a mixture right so exploring the rules of di um di oh, divisibility say it with me bella are you said it right i did i said it right oh Yay. All right, so here you're gonna have all the numerous practice. You're gonna have some inter, um, interweaving um, pictures that you are gonna be able to reference and see how you can fill this out in your main lesson book, whatever you decide to do, whether it's a schoolness or an actual main lesson book. Um, and some of them, just so you love, know, because here we're, we're talking a few, uh, we're talking about the whole shebang. You will have an onion skin with like the language arts or history main lesson box or things like that, a main lesson book, because you have like, usually bigger drawings and if you're using um a different medium you don't want the the drawing to like rub off on the other page so that onion skin protects it so you usually have an option if like um 
from a child's dream or um, Bella Luna toys or Walder supply store, which also online. Um, and you can choose with onion skin or without. Now, if yours comes with it and you, if, and your kid gets confused and they start writing on here, like again, no big deal. But if you want to rip them out, you can't. So the onion skin helps protect their artwork, right? So it doesn't roll up off onto the other page. So it's not really meant to use it, but my daughter constantly would be like oh i thought when she was younger she would just like always draw on this so you can rip it out if you want to um so that's a difference if you're looking and you really want to use a main lesson book with this um and you're seeing one that says with onion skin and one without that's the difference okay all right so i always like the one with onion skin um especially because my kiddos really go out with um drawings this and stuff. is a reducing fraction game and you're going to be um told all the different steps and how to play it and then you play for as long as you want for that block um again now you are scaffolding with a recipe um and um talking about ratios with that um and then you continue on and i don't have everything printed here this is another game fraction war um and again equivalent um fractions game and then you have the multiplication algorithm. I love her multiplication um, curriculum. It's wonderful. Um, and I'll link back down below my review of it. Um, I believe the code is only going to be good for the fraction still. Um, and I'll put that code again there. This is um, like you saw the, the little um, strips that I had. I got that from Right Stars Math Bundle, like math um, manipulators and that worked great but you don't need to have this you can draw it out you can um there she's going to give you a few suggestions for sourcing that laid out with um with some rods is going to be laid out with um blocks whether you're playing with card games whether you're making a recipe whether you're playing um a game with a um you know like fraction wars whether you're doing a demonstration with glasses and music and um you are scaffolding and then revisiting um things over and over again and then building that out whether you're do doing a math narration keeping the math journal or illustrating something out there is a complete out of the box way to tackling fractions and building on for it from year after year. So um, I s highly recommend um, if you haven't done anything um, yet and you have a, let's say a second, you have a third grader, start at uh, fractions year one. Uh, if you are like, you know, a kiddo is a little bit older, still has not cemented, um, possibly look at year three or maybe start at year two and then build to so the year three. code FY3 Arlene, 20% off. That expires April 10, 2024. It's not affiliated. It's just for you guys because you're hanging out with me. So thank you so much. Thank you so much to Della for, um, um, partnering with me today on today's video is always a pleasure another fantastic program uh, another beautiful out of the box immersive way to experiencing math in all its form and not making it something that i dread forever and ever because i normally don't like math can you write high school math for us split it in half we have a half or many ways that we can so today i have the launch for you there goes my ball. Welcome back, friends. If you're writing... What was that? I don't know. What's my name? So long to sanity.